that we're about to give back to you and that you would use them to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
before they have a seat, would you thank the band for all that they did? Larry, I was I was waiting for you to belt one out this morning. Uh, he he shared that he was under the weather, uh, so one of those got shifted. But maybe next week, Larry. Maybe next week. All right, good. All right. Uh, we're continuing on with our series that we started last week. It's called When We All, and uh, that was originally birthed out of the, the old hymn, When We All Get to Heaven, What a Day of Rejoicing That Will Be. And so uh, growing up, the, the whole deal about uh, the kingdom of God, even heaven, was kind of a futuristic thing rather than a current event. See, I fully believe um, from some of my roots, the way that we grew up, we wanted to save people from a future torment that we know of as hell. And I'm telling you that, that every single day I see people living in hell right here. Okay? All right, so if we're gonna if we're gonna find a way to break those chains and get out of those things, then we also have to realize that this futuristic thing called heaven, the kingdom of God, let that kingdom come right here and right now. So that's where the the thought of this um, this message series came from. And so I, I started thinking about: Are we seeing the beauty that's all around us, or that could be around us if we? did certain things, if we said certain things, if we thought about certain things or were aware of certain things. And so that's what this series is about. And so today we pick up with the next part of that, and I actually titled it, Join the Story. And that'll make a little bit more sense as we as we get far, further into it. My wife has a funny sense of humor. And it's one of those that kind of sneaks up on you. And if she finds something funny, it's usually really funny. There was a there was a skit on SNL. Karen, who did was it Fallon? Uh, Jimmy Fallon did a did a skit on SNL, and it was where he was the tech guy. Is anybody? Okay, it's funny stuff. All right, if she says it's funny, it's funny. And so Karen has kind of taken this skit. That, that Jimmy did, and then she realizes that stuff, it really happens in real life. And so what ends up happening is, is the tech guy uh, comes in, and you, you all know that, that deal. If you've been, been in any sort of school system or corporate environment, your computer's not doing something that's supposed to or, or it's, it, it, it's not doing what it should, you know, it, w one way or the other. And so you make the call of shame, to ask somebody to fix it. And so Mr. Tech Guy comes in. And so you look and, what? yeah, Vicki, you, you've done it uh, there, there at the cancer center. And so it's, it's they, they come in and you're first off, you're happy to see them, right? And so you, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. And then you start explaining what it's doing or it's not doing, and they're not impressed with you at all. And so, you know, it's not like... <laughs> And so they come up, and I love Karen's impression of it. I had her to do it in the office this morning. Maybe she'll do it for you later. He, said, he, he sits down. He, he gets ready to sit down, but he looks at you, and he says one word. Move. Right? He won't, <laughs> Move. And it, get out of the way, because the way that they see it, the way that they understand the current situation is there's a problem. You are the problem. Right? And so they start looking at the situation, and you are hindering uh, anything being happening. Uh, anything happening here, you have no idea of what the solution might be. So the best thing that you need to do is move. All right, and there, there. <laughs> and you know the feeling that you get when you. Okay, well I'm just going to stand over here, and they just assume you get out because. The way that they see it is that there's nothing positive. There's no positive part of the story that you could ever be a part of. They'll wave the little work ticket when they're done as they're walking off. Okay, But in their idea, their idea is that move equals get out of the way. Get out of the way. And so it's in light of that, that, that feeling 
that I want us to enter into the Scripture today. It's found in the fourth chapter of Matthew. We'll be looking at verses 18 through 20, and I'm going to be reading it out of the Message Translation. Walking along the beach of Lake Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, later called Peter, and Andrew. They were fishing, throwing, throwing their nets into the lake. It was their regular work. Jesus said to them, Come with me. I'll make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. They didn't ask questions. They simply dropped their nets and followed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, is, isn't that story great? And I love the translation of perch and bass. Don't you? Just me? All right. All right. But anyway, I love that. Uh, some of you saw on Facebook, I posted a couple days ago, there was a quote from Leonard Sweet, who, who I, I love uh, his preaching, I love his teaching. But this is what he said. Je Jesus did not say, come to my seminar or come to my conference. He said, come to my table, come and dine, come and see, and come to me. Well, so today's scripture, he's saying, come with me. Come with me to where I'm going. Come with me. Now, can you imagine how differently this story would play out if he went up to them and said, Move! Right? That, that, that there was a situation going on here, and you don't have any part of it. As a matter of fact, you are part of the problem. But he didn't say that. He didn't say, Move! He said, Did you all hear it? He said, no, no, no. In this translation, he says, come with me. And so this incredible person, this person that had insight that other people didn't have, he walks along and, and he finds a small group of fishermen. And as he goes along, he, he invites them and he challenges them to come and make a life-changing decision. Um, theologians argue this part of the Bible when they come along, they argue over how well these individuals knew of Jesus. You know, had, they, had they had discussions along the way? Did they know? Some people think that, that they did know him before, like fairly well. Uh, some people think that maybe they've just heard about the things that he's doing, the things that he's teaching, and some of the uproar that, he, that, that he's causing by some of the deeds that that, that he has uh, already done at that time. But for whatever reason, this is one of those epiphany-type moments. It's a time to where maybe he sees them for who they are, but definitely they turn around and see him for who he is. But, and, and he extends this call to them. Now, you understand that, that this fishing, this thing that they were currently doing, it was their livelihood. They were there at the family business, and they're, they're, they're taking care of their nets. They're taking care of the floats and weights and making sure that in pretty well the same way that they fished then is about the same way that they fish uh, there now. They would go and they would didn't have refrigeration, those sorts of things, so they would catch the fish, they would dry them, they would cure them, they would pickle them, whatever it was, and then they would turn around and sell it. So the area needed that thing that they were providing, which was the fish. They needed that resource, but these individuals also needed the money. It was their livelihood. It was how they made, made a living whenever they sold it. But this call was extended to them, come with me. Brian, he comes to the OR and says, come with me. Can you imagine everything that's going through your mind? Or let's jump over to April. Can you imagine what's going through April's mind at that point? To that, kind of, that kind of trust that you have to put in, into that call. It, but, but it notice here, it's not some, you better come with me. It, it's not any sort of threatening thing. It's not any undue pressure, that's, but it is, I believe it said, with passion. I, I, and I think it said with conviction, come with me. And it says that they drop their nets, they drop their scaffold, they drop their whatever, and they follow them. You know, is that not awesome? To go try to find them, catch men and women rather than perch and bass. Now, 
on the outskirts of it, or, or just at, just looking at it, it looks like that's pretty fantastic, but it's even deeper than that from a different standpoint. Jesus is calling them, back during this time, a rabbi didn't go out seeking students. The students would go seek the teacher. The students would go and say, that's somebody that I want to follow and learn from. See, it was a pride issue. If, if you were that great, if you were that wonderful on teaching, then people would just flock to you. So here, Jesus puts away the pride, he puts away the arrogance, and he says, come with me. He sought people to walk with him. He sought people that he knew had what was necessary for the story to continue. And he invited them to join the story on with him. Now, it wasn't just that he sought them. Uh, he, 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 he challenged them to come out of their comfort zone. Anybody, amen? He, he said, I want you to come, and it, it, it's not going to be easy. But he didn't just say, come with me. His ultimate goal was to, to disciple these individuals, to pour himself out and to teach these individuals along the way. Because, why? He had a desire to change the world. He had a desire, and he knew that these were individuals that would be profitable to that, that he could pour into them, and then through their uh, thought, through their word, through their deed, that they would be able to continue this story if they would simply join in the story. So his primary goal was to mold disciples. Now, he didn't go send somebody else out to do that. He went personally, and he made that call, and he made that challenge himself for them to follow. Now, notice where he went. He didn't go to universities. He didn't go to the synagogue to try to find the smartest, brightest. No offense. Some of you are the, some of the smartest people I've ever known, <laughs> and some of you are here. But, but what he did was he went, he went and he found those people that he knew could... He went to the man on the street. He went to the person that was out there doing something, and, it, and they were probably good fishermen, earning decent wages at, at, at that time for their family. But he, he didn't go to just the highbrow. He, didn't, he went to the man on the street, and then he started teaching them, get this, to do the same thing. He started discipling them how to disciple people. He called them and taught them how to call people. Now, with that, how did you end up here? Think about it. Some of you just happened upon us. We'll hear some of that later. But some of you were specifically invited. Some of you were specifically, and I have to believe that it was something along the line of, come with me. I have to believe that somewhere along the line it was some sort of a, hey, uh, come and see, or in, in the, if you go to the Old Testament, it would say taste and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on, come on, come try it out and see what, what's going on. But today what we're going to have is the second installment, and we've got one more, but the second installment of Jeff's video of some questions that were posed to some of our members. journey and how I ended up at the church, I think you have to look a little bit further back for me historically, and my journey really changed paths at the walk to Emmaus. The experience that I had there changed me forever, and it changed the way I looked at being a follower, follower of Jesus, and as a result of that, I had a new way of thinking and a new way of doing things, and I wanted to do things differently. 
And the church just happened to come about at a time where there were a group of people who I truly believe shared those same thoughts in that they wanted to follow Jesus but do it in a way that uh, wasn't necessarily uh, the way that it always had been done. But all of us felt some type of calling toward um, just a new way of loving like Jesus, of being a church with the freedom to express how you wanted to love Jesus, how you, your, your heart's desire instead of being regulated. We were invited to an 8.30 service at another church. It was a, a more contemporary service, more laid-back service. And um, we went, and we really, really liked it. We liked the pastor. We liked the people that were there. And so very quickly we found ourselves plugged in to that service and found ourselves very quickly invested in lives of people that went to that service in a way that we never had before in any other church. And um, after just a very short time, we found out that the, our pastor, who we considered to be our pastor, was leaving. And he was just talking with me about the plan that he had for this church. And, you know, at the time, I really didn't know what would become of it, what would happen. Um, it was all very, very new ground, very um, a, a new process for me. I'd always involved in some kind of an already established church. This was ground zero. And so when he left, and they organized and decided that they were going to start a new new body and ask him to lead it, we said, sounds good to us, and we jumped on board too. A friend of mine had been asking us to go, so I messaged, sent her a message, and I said, um, you know, we'd like to join you at church in the morning. What time does it start? And she said, we'd love to have you at 10.30. So Tyler and I went to the church. We came in. We sat in the back. We looked around. I couldn't find my friends. I told Taylor, I said, I don't know any of these people. And he said, well, maybe she's running late. Maybe so. But she never showed up. Uh, a friend of mine and I were named in a lawsuit. And um, after we both testified, um, my boss at the time asked me to go check on her. And I did, and she ended up in a minister's office. And um, it kind of just funneled from there. And then she just kept asking me to go to church. And finally one day I ran out of excuses, and so we went. And I told Bobby I wasn't going by myself, so he had to go with And him. we come in as strangers, but we didn't leave as strangers that day. We felt love. We felt caring. And most of all, we felt God. And that was on Palm Sunday last year. And we, we, might, we decided that morning that we were, we were coming back. And we keep coming back. So anyway, when we decided that we needed to raise our family in a church. It's, <laughs> it's been one of the best decisions I've made, bar none. Established so many incredible relationships. Um, shared so many incredible memories and it's been, it's been well worth it. We took a step out of church for quite a while. Um, my son has challenges that he faces and because of those, church became a very difficult place for him and um, it was stressful for him. He couldn't really find a, a place that he fit in and um, it was hard. It was hard to get up and go every day. So we found ourselves at a place where we just walked away from the church and um, the desire to be in fellowship with, with other Christians was still there. And um, after several promptings from, from my son's school counselor, we decided to give this church a try and we came and um, we were amazed at the difference 
diversity of people that were there. Um, and the, um, the love that people showed. Mm -hmm. We didn't showcase love. And that is how I believe I got started at the church. And that has been what has kept me going and being a part of the right. church and what uh, we didn't feel like we were being watched and my son didn't feel like all the eyes in the room were on him he felt happy when he left and he felt like he had been in a place that he was accepted and um he was up. I watched it like five times so I wouldn't cry. Oh, <laughs> it didn't work. All right. There was a price for the disciples to follow Jesus. There was a price. There was a cost. And I'm telling you that it's true even today. You know, wouldn't it be awesome if come follow me, come with me, and then all of a sudden everything's glorious? But see, it, it, it comes with that challenge of, of that, yes, I'm supposed to respond to the call, but I'm also supposed to turn and make disciples goes back to Brian's message uh, quite a long time ago now. We've been together. It seems like this long, but it's only been this about a lot of us, we come on and we, we want to be part of the cruise ship, you know, when really it's a battleship. And so we're not here to be served, but yet we're here to serve others. And I truly believe that when we answer, when we answer the call that we'll start seeing a church being led by the Spirit, that's on fire by the Spirit or from the Spirit, and that will turn out to impact the world. It's those small fires that, that start to smolder in those places, and it brings, and a lot of times uh, uh, some people are not aware of the different life groups and the things that they're doing. I know at Christmas time, the, uh, you don't know. Now we did some things with the help agency and things that were that were big corporate type things but our small groups it's it it is they're reaching out we're changing people we're changing lives and then those people are going out pouring into other people and inviting them to come alongside it as well i guarantee you that whatever cost it is the gains that we gain from it 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 totally outweighs the suffering it totally outweighs the loss and if and when you hear that call depends on several things. Number one, your ears. And it doesn't have to be your actual uh, uh, physical ears. Maybe it's in here, but, but it depends on that. It depends on your will. I don't know. A lot of us are uh, very um, tough. We're very rigid, and we've got it figured out, and our will is this. Well, somehow, sometime you've got to humble yourself and say, you know what, I'll drop my net and I'll, I'll, I'll try it your way. And then the other thing is your attitude. When you hear that, it depends on your attitude as to whether you're ready or not. But remember now, God does not force. God does not, I'm going to say, even plead. He is God. And he's there and he's always wooing. He's always calling. But he's, but he's not going to be beating you over the head with it. He presents the, the call right there in front of you, and he gives you that option. But then the question is, will you decide to join in the journey? Will you decide to join, or when will you decide to join part uh, and be part of this story when you hear the call to come with me? Are you waiting for the tech guy to come and say, Move! Are you ready, waiting for someone to come and look down and, and that be the reason, okay, well, you're looking down on me, so therefore I'll come and be a part of it? Or, or are you willing to actually listen to God?
God who longs to have a relationship with you, who calls you into that and wants to invite you to be a part of this story because that's, just, that's who he is. And so if we're going to live out our, our mission statement of living intentionally in a Christ-like manner to bring glory to God, that's what we do. We invite people. My, my term that you'll hear is come walk alongside. What, Vicky? You probably know. It. What's that? Uh, that deal? Don't walk. Don't walk in front of me. Don't walk behind. You know that one? Yeah. It's <coughs> yeah. The country version of that is don't walk. Don't walk behind me. I think I just stepped in something. But but the, yeah, it's like don't don't walk ahead. I may not follow. Don't walk behind me because I may not lead. Walk beside me. Because where I'm going is, I, where I'm trying to lead you is to Christ. And everything that Christ does is point to the healing, restoration, and reconciliation that comes with, from God. Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. Father, I thank you so much for this time to where we've opened up our hearts. Uh, and some of us, maybe we're opening up our will to have it conform to your will. Father, I ask that you open our ears this morning, open our spirits to hear you calling to come join the story, to come with me, come follow me. As, 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 we, as we open up and receive that, there's some of us that maybe need to go, we know that we need to go into a deeper relationship. Stop being on the take, take, take side and turn into uh, learning about this whole discipling thing and then pouring that out on someone else. And let us not be so prideful and arrogant that we're waiting for people to come and ask us, but rather we need to go and follow the teachings of Jesus and go and ask someone, uh, will you come walk with me? Will you come, will you come follow me? Will you, will you come walk alongside on this faith journey? Will you come be a part of the story that you aren't the problem, Though you may not know the solution, the solution knows you. Father, this morning there may be some people here that don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and, and maybe they want to come and, and give themselves wholly and say, I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to come and give, it, give all that I am. I want to drop my net and be a part of this story as you surrender to him and, and accept that gift of eternal life entering into the kingdom right now not some futuristic thing but joining the story right now and we'll follow with, with believers baptism some of us maybe need to just get rid of some distractions in our life or maybe you've been walking and not being an official part of an official partner in ministry, a member here at the church, and maybe you want to come individually or as a family, and, and that option is open as well. Miss Karen would love to fill out just a little bit of information. Whatever the decision is this morning, Father, I, I, I ask that you not allow us to leave this place without hearing the call that you are giving for us to join the story. We pray these things in the blessed holy name of Jesus. Amen. The altar is open. Oh, wow. A thousand stories of love. I think your life but I Who I am, who I am, who I am.
Gathered here in worship, now it's time to go and be the church. Amen. <laughs> 